Hello, I'm Bernard Hickey from interest.co.nz and welcome to a special investing report brought to you in association with the BNZ. Today we want to have a look at this giant game of pass the parcel that's going on all around the world as private debt is transferred onto the balance sheets of governments. So it's going from the private sector to the public sector. And we've seen this in all sorts of ways all around the world. Obviously in the United States where private banks were essentially bailed out by the US government. They took on a lot of that debt onto their balance sheet. We saw it in the UK too, where some of the biggest banks were effectively nationalised and a lot of that debt was brought on to the UK government's balance sheets. And we saw it to an extent in Australia and New Zealand, where uh, government guarantees were offered on bank deposits and finance company deposits in both Australia and New Zealand. And we saw it in particular during the crisis of 2008, in particular October 2008. There's a really interesting case going on right now in Iceland where this game of pass the parcel is being shown up to be exactly what it is. A game where eventually someone has to pay the bill. It's worth looking at this Icelandic example just to see what might happen in some other countries down the track where eventually someone has to pay the bill and voters get a choice. Now, in the case of Iceland, during October 2008, there was a real disaster when Icelandic banks in Britain and the Netherlands effectively didn't have enough money to pay back uh, the deposits that were being withdrawn by customers in Britain and the Netherlands. So the British government froze those accounts under using anti-terrorist rules and eventually have forced Icelandic voters to say this debt, the debt owed by a private company, is now the Icelandic government's debt, therefore the Icelandic taxpayers' debt. And a deal was being pushed through by the Icelandic government. It was eventually blocked by the Icelandic president after a public outrage. Nearly a quarter of Iceland's 300,000 residents voted against, or at least signed a petition against this, uh, this particular deal. And a vote went through on the weekend where Icelandic voters, more than 90%, opposed this deal. This deal which would effectively have meant that a private bank's debt in Britain and Holland was transferred back to the taxpayers in Iceland. And this puts it all into stark relief. Just imagine if you're one of those taxpayers in Iceland, about 300,000 of them. They face now a debt of £3.5 billion. That works out at having to repay $135 US a month per person for eight years. That's what happens when the parcel is passed and eventually lands on the doorstep of the taxpayer. This asks the question in this crisis, who eventually will pay? Because there's two different ways you can deal with a crisis like this. Either you can take the pain now in the form of lower asset values, not just of debt securities but also assets, let's say a house price. Or you can transfer the pain and dribble it out and transfer it around to other people in the form of moving it onto the taxpayers' balance sheets. So we have our own little example here in New Zealand where there's a, there are suggestions that the government will offer a bailout to leaky building owners in New Zealand. The leaky building crisis could top more than $20 billion, according to experts. And the question is, should the government pay taxpayers' money or provide a government guarantee so that leaky home owners can effectively rebuild their houses? What this does is transfer the pain directly from leaky building owners to the taxpayer at large. And over the long term, some people say that's fair because this is such a big problem it will eventually affect everyone. But it does raise this question, who should pay and when should they pay? Should they pay now in the form of a big cut in their house price? Or should the bank pay by taking a hit on the loan they've made? Or should taxpayers pay over the longer term? A really interesting question, and we're seeing that in stark relief right now in Iceland. How long before we see it in New Zealand? I'm Bernard Hickey. That was a special investment report brought to you in association with the BNZ.